Friends, this is barbecue sauce. Wait until you see that recipe. I promise you, you make this barbecue sauce, you'll never again buy a bottle of barbecue sauce. And the good thing is you can keep it in your freezer for 17 years. I hope you like it. If you like it, remember it gives us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to ring the bells. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to make the best barbecue sauce you've ever had in your life, I promise you. It's amazing. All right, friends, another fantastic recipe for you today. Uh, you know, I always say they're fantastic because let me tell you something. If they're not fantastic, I don't do it. A barbecue sauce. If you've never had a homemade barbecue sauce, I promise you, you're going to love this one. First thing we're going to do, we're going to check the temperature of the oil because you, we don't want it to be too cold and we don't want it to be too hot. Otherwise, it burns. And if it's too cold, we don't caramelize the onion. Let me give you a quick, remember, for, let me just get the onion going. Let me make sure they're good. Yeah, we're good. Just want to make sure the onion are going. Don't be afraid to put a lot of onion, friends. Don't be afraid to put a lot of onion, okay? The onion, everybody loves them. Everybody loves onion, especially if you take the time to caramelize them, which, trust me, I do. I'm going to take the time to caramelize them. So, remember, for all of you that are new to my channel, this is not Tic Tac Talk when they do recipe in five minutes and you have no idea what they're doing. This is a cooking channel where you watch the recipe and say, hey, I like it, I want to do this. You, next time you want to do it, you first go to the website, you print the recipe, and, and it's right below the video right now. You click on see more. You click and you have a link. You get a free recipe in our website. You download the recipe and you make your mise en place. You get all the ingredients, chop and dice, before you watch the video and then when you got it all down, we'll do it together. So I'm sure there's a lot of you out there now that are already doing it at home. So let's do it. Let's get, cook let's get cooking together, friends. So the first thing we do is we got the onion chopped and we're going to caramelize them until they get golden brown because they are sweeter that way. And in a minute, we will put the rest of the ingredients. We got leeks. Leeks is another onion. And... And you know, the beautiful thing is, in this recipe, we don't need to worry too much about how little we cut things, some medium size, small size, big size. Because that whole thing is gonna get cooked and then we're gonna puree. We're gonna take the immersion blender and we're gonna make it nice and smooth. So don't worry about how you chalk them up. I mean, try to make sure they're the same size. Size matter in cooking, remember that, size matter. Because if you don't cut them at the same size, what happened? They don't cook at the same speed. So it's important. We don't want some raw piece of onion and some overcooked piece of onion. All right? So we're going to continue caramelizing them. Uh, and then we're going to put the leeks after we see some color. Not before that. Caramelization of onion is important. We're going to put the leeks. Then we got celery. Then we got peppers. We got uh, bell peppers. They're sweet. They're going to be delicious. Tomatoes. Chopped tomatoes. I use the same tomato. The, um, the Italian La Valle tomatoes that I use for my marinara sauce. And then ketchup. I got, you got to put ketchup with tomato sauce. I mean for a barbecue sauce. And I have a little bit of habanero pepper and serrano pepper. Put a little bit of heat in there. You know, you don't have to put it in there. You can put hot sauce if you don't have them and it'll be perfectly fine. And I have also a chipotle pepper in adobo sauce. Now this thing, friend... It's so hot. You have to be very careful. We're going to use just a little bit, like a, a tablespoon at the most, with maybe one chip of the pepper in there. Unless you're cooking for the whole church, you don't need the whole thing, trust me. Uh, dry mustard, we use a, a dry uh, Dijon mustard. I mean, the Dijon mustard, it's an English mustard. I have a maple balsamic vinegar. Let me check over there on my onion. Very good. Um, Maple balsamic vinegar, you don't have maple balsamic vinegar, you use a good balsamic vinegar. A little bit of brown sugar, especially if your balsamic vinegar is young and acid, you want to use brown sugar. I use a dark brown sugar, it's not a sweet. Uh, Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, the English people are trying to correct me. Uh, liquid smoke, believe it or not folks, this is a natural product, it's made with the hickory wood and water. Uh, and it's an amazing product, and we use very, very little in the background just to give you that smokiness. It's really, really, really good. So now let's continue, friends. Let's continue and see what do we got here. We got 
Come on, let's on you. So let me get put, increase the heat now that I'm on top of the pot. That I'm not talking about anything else anymore. You got to keep an eye on that pot, friends. Well, it's smoky. You notice? Not smoky. It's just uh, uh, steam for the onion. The water coming out of the onion. You see? And then we're caramelizing them. They twist. They taste better. Remember, don't forget. Caramelized onion is better than a plain blanched onion. You know, whenever you see those people putting all the stuff in the same time, putting the celery and, and, and leeks and all at the same time, the onion never caramelized. If the onion doesn't caramelize, you're missing an opportunity to give a really great death. I mean, yeah, it'll cook. But if it doesn't caramelize, you're missing that opportunity. You know what you should do? I'll tell you what you should do, friends. For those of you that don't know or, or are wondering what, what, what am I talking about, you should educate your palate. Because you, you, everybody thinks they're born with an educated palate. Not true. You, you build one. You educate your palate. So how do you do it? Well, you, you eat a raw onion, right? And then you, you caramelize it, like I'm doing right there. And then you eat that one. And you tell me which one you like better. Same onion. One has been caramelized. The other one has not. And I promise you, you're going to say to yourself, well, I like it better when they caramelize, right? I'm, I'm, rem I'm removing myself from the steam. Uh, you're going to say to yourself, I like the one that is caramelized better. Well, so that's what you want in your barbecue sauce. You want the one that's been caramelized. That's why I do it. Okay? And I know I'm repeating myself for those of you that watch my channel all the time. But hey, nothing wrong with that. More you hear, more you get it. All right? Look, my whole purpose in life right now is to teach America how to cook, to teach the world how to cook. We got people in Switzerland. You know, we got a lot of people in Australia. Australia. A lot of Australians are watching our show. And this is a wonderful thing. We got people all over the world that are watching our show. In India. In, um, in Spain. Oh, boy. Should have heard them when I did the paella. This is not a paella. Oh, boy. The um, Spanish recipe police was on me with this, man. Let me tell you. Holy macaroni. Uh, oh, you know what I forgot, friends? Is uh, garlic. I forgot garlic. I forgot to take garlic, but lucky me, I should have some in my refrigerator. Let's check it out. Yes, lucky me. <laughs> I always have garlic. I can't believe I forgot the garlic. You know, sometimes I wonder about me. Uh, measure carefully. Don't worry about it. It's going to be very mild. You're going to say, oh, that's a lot of garlic. I promise you. It's not a lot of garlic, friends, because it's going to be so mild. You know, here, go give him another one. <laughs> Nobody's going to complain because it's going to be very nice and mild. And if they complain, just don't invite them again. That's all. They don't complain again next time, I promise you. All right. So, a little bit of brown sugar. And the reason why we're putting a little brown sugar is in case your balsamic vinegar is sour. If you're buying a balsamic vinegar at a grocery store, it's going to be four years old. It's going to be pretty sour. Mine is 18 years old, so it's not too sour. So I'm not putting, uh, I'm not worried too much about it, okay? But remember, uh, uh, sweet and sour, gastric, balancing sweet and sour. It's very important, friends. We'll talk about all this later. I promise you, I'm going to educate all of you. I promise you. Little dry mustard. You notice I measure everything very carefully, yeah? Little Worcestershire sauce. This is the secret to measure everything. Uh, the uh, a chipotle pepper in a double sauce. Look, one spoon. Oh, okay. That's a lot. That's a lot. You're going to say, oh my God, he's going to make it so hot. And you were not kidding. Uh, tomatoes. And, 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 and really, for those of you that want to measure the recipe, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a recipe on the website, I promise you, friends, so you can follow it, right? And then we're going to have um, ketchup. Ketchup. Some people in, 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 uh, in part of the world that don't know about us, I said, this guy is crazy. He's using ketchup. Trust me, you, you eat my barbecue sauce, you don't think I'm crazy. You're going to love it. All right? No, I promise you. And uh, you know what you can do with a barbecue sauce, friends? You make it. And you keep it in a freezer. Yeah, 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 you don't keep it in the fridge. I mean, maybe, you, you know the one, the one you, you buy at the grocery store, you buy it, you put it in the door of the fridge, 
and, and, and eight years later, it's still good because it's got so much preservative in it. This is not the case. This is fresh stuff. So, so you make it, it's only good for a few days in the fridge, okay, four or five days in the fridge. You want to keep it, you keep it in a freezer, all right? Freezer, freezer, 17 years minimum. Uh, a little salt and pepper. Oh, I should have washed for the pepper because I got a lot of chipotle in there already. A little salt. See, I put salt in mine because I don't have any salt. It's not like I'm putting, did I put everything in there yet? Oh, a little hot chili pepper. And then later around, later around, not yet, when we finish it, we're going to put those two guys. Whenever I do the barbecue things, I finish it up with a little bourbon. The, uh, the bourbon whiskey, maple, maple flavored bourbon whiskey. Cooper's Mark. I love it. All right, now we're going to put the stock in here, friends. And I got a beef stock. This is my beef stock. Okay, so now, if you don't have a beef stock, obviously, you can use a beef base. You can use whatever it is you have as a beef product. But I highly recommend, my friends, then you... Go to the website and, and, uh, or go to the YouTube channel. Go in on our YouTube channel, Chef Jean-Pierre. You download the recipe for stock and you make stock. Try one time, friends. I promise you, you make stock one time, you make this sauce, you make all the other sauce that I make, and you'll never go back to store both product. I promise you. This is like day and night, okay? This is so amazing. So we're going to let this cook for a while, right? We're going to let this cook for a while. And then after it's cooked for a while, we're going to go with an immersion blender and we're going to puree it all to make it nice and smooth. And this barbecue sauce, friends, you just have to make it. You just have to taste it. And for all of you that came to my school in Fort Lauderdale or my restaurant, you know what I'm talking about. This is really, really amazing. We can do so many things with this. I mean, I put it on salmon. I put it on, fi uh, on, 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 on lamb. I put it on chicken. Uh, I, I do so many things with this. It's amazing. You can, I can add cream and a little more whiskey, a little cognac with it. You serve it with shrimp and lobster. It's really uh, a, a barbecue sauce, and it's going to get to a whole different dimension for you. And it wasn't that difficult. It's just a little chopping and dicing and get all the ingredients ready. But it's not that big of a deal to make. All right? So we're going to let it cook. For a good 45 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, and then we'll come back, we're going to finish it together, okay? All right, so we'll be right back. Okay, friends, the barbecue sauce is ready. If you could be here right now and smell this thing, oh, amazing. Let's look at it together. And um, you can see it's pretty thick. And, uh, and this is great because we're going to use all that thickness uh, uh, to, to give us some more thickness in the sauce. But however, I have always a little bit of stock ready in the stove just in case I need a little more liquid. Because sometimes it evaporates, a lot evaporates, and you may have to add a little bit. Maybe you don't, maybe you do, maybe you don't. This is where we're going to add our liquid smoke. You don't have to do that if you don't like it, but I promise you, it's a great product. It's, it's, it smells amazing. You have to go take it easy with it. You don't need a lot, eh? Oop, that's it. I promise you, that in the background is enough. Bourbon, whiskey, you don't have to do that either. <laughs> I do. <laughs> put a little bit in there. Don't put too much, no. You just want to make them happy, not drunk. And, uh, and now what we're going to do, folks, we're going to use the immersion blender, and we're going to puree this whole thing. Now, this is crucial. This is crucial because we want to get all that juice and all those vegetables, friends. We want to get all that juice in there, you see? This is part of the deal right there. We want to get it nice and smooth. So longer I leave this in here, and smoother it's going to be. I'm kind of tilting my pot, as you can see. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that I don't splatter my whole stove. <laughs> And it's, so we put everything, and right now it's not looking very good. I don't like it. Meaning, I don't like the way it looks, because it's all, it looks like granulated. It looks like, um, I don't know. But that's the way, that's the process, you know. It's like when you make a vegetable soup, when you do anything. 
at the beginning of it, it's not very smooth. I don't know if you noticed on my stove, I got a pan with a strainer in it. And I am going to strain it. Now, a lot of people like it just the way it is. It's really a matter of taste, literally. However you like it. It's, you know, matter of taste, matter of taste. I don't know the difference. But however it, <laughs> whatever it does for you, whatever makes you happy. You notice it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother, right? This, folks, probably is one of the tools I use the most often in a kitchen. I really do use that the most. My immersion blender to make soup dressing. Now, when I make soup, I get the big one, <laughs> the boat motor. But here it would be a little overkill, so I'm not using it. But an immersion blender is without a doubt one of the most often tools in my kitchen. It transforms texture. Remember, texture is a conductor of flavor. So it's really, really important. So we're going to be testing it for salt, pepper, bourbon. And see if we have sharp edges. Sharp edges and could be left from the Worcestershire sauce, from the mustard, from vinegar. If you're having a sour, a sour vinegar, not me, because my vinegar is sweet. Uh, oh, that's noisy. I didn't realize how noisy it was. So at this point, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take this guy and we're going to put it here so we don't mess up the kitchen too much. Stay over here. And, uh, and we're going to start testing it, friends. And at this point, if you can get in the pot right now and look, and, and look, and you can see, a lot of people are going to be satisfied with that texture. It's typical of a barbecue sauce, this texture. I don't like it that way. I like it smoother. So it's really up to you. Whatever it is you like, it's going to be okay for you. You see? It... Oh, yeah, baby. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's delicious. I think uh, our texture is good. We're going to strain it now at this point. I can put also just a, a, a very, very, oop, 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 there you go. Three more oops of the liquid smoke. So I want you to do me a favor when you test something like this, friends. You have to think of the ingredient you put in there and say to yourself, am I testing this one? Am I testing this one? Am I testing this one? If you're not, then you may have to add a little bit more, you see? Mm. <laughs> it's hot, but it's delicious. Mm -mm -mm. I think we're good on the seasoning. Now I think we got it. <laughs> I think we got it right there, friends. You watch, you watch, you watch, you watch, you watch. Measure carefully, it's very important. Eh? Follow the recipe, it tells you exactly how much to put in. Now they're going to download the recipe and going to go, ah, that's not true. <laughs> Let's see. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Now we're good. Now, now let's go to the next step, friends. And the next step is going to be to take it to the next level. I'm not going to do the whole pot. I just wanted to show you. Then you decide what to do, okay? You make the, you make the decision. There's no right or wrong here. It's whatever makes you happy. In a commercial kitchen, we use a, uh, a chinois. And I know a lot of you don't have a chinois, so I'm not going to push it, the chinois. Sometime I have to use it because it's really important, but here I can get away with that. This is what we call a, a double mesh strainer or a triple mesh strainer. This is really a triple mesh strainer. This is really, 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 really very thin strainer. I'm going to show you, and then you decide. You decide what you like. All right? So look, I'm going to put it here. Not exactly what you would want to do, but let's, all of us, look at this together. And you tell me. Let me just turn my heat off so I don't have to concentrate on nothing else but talking to you about texture. Okay? Look, look at this. Okay? You know what? Let's just do this. You look at it. I hope there's enough light in the pot for them to see it. You see right there, folks? 
This is smooth, smoother than this. To me, this will test better than this. Uh, this is going to be the same. You, you would think, right? Oh, well, it's, kind of, it's the same ingredient. It's just a different texture. Texture is a conductor of flavor. If I make this smoother silk, it'll taste better than this. You should give it a try. You try this, and then you try this. You'll be amazed. You would be amazed of the difference. I can feel the chunkiness of that sauce on my tongue. Remember, it's all about the tongue. It's all about the tongue. I can feel it, the pieces of vegetables on my tongue here. Here, they almost disappear. I'm going to tell you something crazy now. Don't tell anybody. But when I was in the restaurant business, I would take this and strain it three or four times until it was smooth as silk. And guess what I would do? Don't tell anybody. I would take a little butter, and I would put it in here just like this. Just like this. And you know what that did to the sauce? It gave it the je ne sais quoi, smooth a silk. Not only did it give it a sh little shine to it, but it gave it a, a feeling of velvet on the tongue that is almost sexy. I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. They think I'm crazy, yeah? <laughs> but don't tell anybody. Look, 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 look. Don't tell me. Then this guy right there doesn't look better than this guy right there. Let's see. Look, look, look. Look, I don't want to confuse you. I'm confusing you, sorry. Hold on. You see? This versus this. Now, it may not look like much difference, but I promise you, if you do it another time, poo, I'm not going to bore you with it, but I promise you. Texture is a conductor of flavor. Don't forget, friends. This is it. I hope you make this barbecue sauce. I promise you, after you make this barbecue sauce, you'll never buy another one at the store. This doesn't even compare. Yeah, this, it's like a completely different ballpark. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoy doing it for you. Do me a favor, if you like the video, please subscribe to our channel. We need new subscribers. We need you to give us a thumb up and thumb, thumbs up. <laughs> and please, don't forget to ring the bell. So every Thursday or whenever we put up a new video, you get a little ding on your phone letting us you, letting you know. Thank you so much. I'm glad you watched and it was a pleasure to cook for you. We'll see you next week.